We're speaking with Dr. Bernie Klein. He is the chief executive over there at Providence Holy Cross. And, um, and we've been talking a lot about healthcare reform and, and all those things, but I wanted to ask you, um, how are you guys uh, working to grow like just your regular services and programs and stuff like that? I see, okay, so in my notes, it says robotics, which sounds like a lot of fun and sounds kind of awesome. We'll get to that in a second maybe, but I just want to know like generally what services and, and are you, what are you guys doing to grow services and, and programs? So this this is for me is one of the more exciting parts of my job. We are we are are growing in a variety of specialties and areas at Providence Holy Cross. Uh, so let's start with surgery, okay? Okay. And we did last year acquire a Da Vinci robot. And so you think, oh my gosh, a robot. An artist. An artist the, robot. Where's the doctor? <laughs> <laughs> um, just so you know, the way it works is the robot is uh, hand controlled. So the doctor sits behind a module, almost like a video game. What? And uses the hand controls to control the arms and instruments that the robot has. And, and so therefore, you can, in theory, do surgeries much more precisely with less damage to the surrounding tissue. It's primarily used in... Um, That's wild. It is wild. <laughs> it's, it's very cool. Uh, it's primarily used in uh, surgery of the prostate, prostatectomies removing the prostate okay. on patients with prostate cancer. It's also used uh, fairly frequently in GYN surgery, hysterectomies, removing the uterus. Okay. Uh, however, it can be used in some oncologic or cancer surgeries, also some cardiac or thoracic surgeries, so some heart and lung surgeries. But the majority of use today is still prostate and hysterectomies. Is it l like, uh, like you is, do they really have like joysticks and they're just like... Uh -huh. Really? They really do. They sit at a module. They have a, a camera that they look through, and then the patient's in the same room. Okay. And the machine is uh, is right at the patient. What? And and so they can they control it through that method. It's a uh, it's it's a uh, it's pretty impressive. Uh, well, so and and you said it could be more precise than. In theory, it's more precise. Okay. The, the 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 incisions and 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 maneuvers are more precise than really? in, with than, using than your hand. human hand. Yeah. Yeah. Who would sometimes make a squiggly line or hopefully something like not. that. Well, well, hopefully not. But, but it, you know, if I'm drawing a line, it's probably not going to be straight. And so if you have that, that type of error out of it, then, wow, that's crazy. That, that blew my mind just now. And so there really are robots. There okay. really are robots okay. in the OR. So, I, so how, what else are you guys working on over there? So um, in addition, we are growing our orthopedic service. We have recruited uh, a hand surgeon, so we have several excellent hand surgeons on staff at Holy Cross. We do a lot of joint replacement at Holy Cross, knees and hips, and we have the standard approach, which is a incision along the outside of the leg, but we also have a surgeon that now does the anterior approach, which is at the front of the leg, and there's some evidence that recovery may be quicker with the anterior approach. Uh, in addition, we do anesthesia in a variety of ways, uh, including what they call a regional block, where we just numb the leg, the region of the leg, and what that allows is the patient to recover more quickly. So the sooner the anesthesia wears off, the quicker we can get you moving again, so you can be oh, on okay. your way to recovering and getting back to the activities you like to do before you needed your surgery. Is that like so the person would be awake for that? They well, we would sedate them so they're okay. not. They're, you're not like wide awake and chatting okay. with the doc. Yeah, because that that was, that was what I had in my mind. You, but we wouldn't have to uh, put you to sleep and and put you on a breathing machine. Gotcha. Okay. So gotcha. Um, and then uh, we have a another a surgeon who also does pelvic reconstruction for some of the more difficult trauma cases. We have a variety of podiatrists on staff who are phenomenal because of our trauma program. They are doing surgery frequently, so they can do ankle reconstruction wow. and some very uh, complicated ankle surgeries. Um, How do you so uh, yeah. real quick? Sorry. Yeah. No. Please. How do you assess like okay, uh, you're sitting there and you're like, man, I've gotten a lot of people with feet problem like do I so I needed a podiatrist how does that work do you like assess that do you see the patients that come in and say because you just said you got a new hand doctor 
we need we would need a hand doctor do you yeah. how do you do that so how do you decipher that it depends on how the patient access the healthcare system if if it's not emergent many will go to their primary care doc or their local orthopedist and he or she may refer them to one of these specialists the other options they come through our emergency room and then based on the emergency room physician's evaluation he or she will call the appropriate specialist depending on the need the surgical specialist gotcha. okay and so you see those and you're like okay yeah. we should probably get a hand doctor out here correct yeah. Hand surgeon. Correct. Okay. Gotcha. That's okay. exactly it. Okay. Um, then we've offered, now we're, so we'll move to some other areas. One of the exciting things we just started offering late last year, and we're the only hospital that I'm aware of, again, in the Valley or the Santa Clarita Valley, is something called EBUS, endoscopic bronchial ultrasound. So, EBUS. EBUS. Okay. So, people have heard of bronchoscopy, where they you take a tube with fiber optics and you can look down the throat into the breathing tubes of your lungs to see if you have any tumors or any, any problems with your airways. EBIS puts a ultrasound transducer on the end. So oh. ultrasound takes pictures, right? Babies, yeah, get, yeah. moms get ultrasounds when they're pregnant. Yep. Um, so what they did was they put the ultrasound on the end of the broncho bronchoscope. So if a patient shows up and they have a tumor on an x-ray, and you're not sure what it is, and it's near the, the, the bronc main bronchus, the main breathing tube, we can go down with the EBUS, visualize it from the inside, which gives you a better point of view, and do a biopsy. So we have more precise diagnosis of potential lung cancers. So that's Sweet. very exciting. That's that's cool stuff. we got to take a quick break. I want to talk a little bit more about this okay. and then shift gears a little bit. Sounds good. Right after the break. This is the Providence Holy Cross Hour on AM 1220 KHTS. Uh, your hometown station. And we are speaking with Dr. Bernie Klein. He's the chief executive over there at Providence Holy Cross. And uh, we were talking about some of the changes, some of the cool stuff that you guys are, some new toys, as it were. But they actually help people, so... Can't really call them toys. But anyway, um, you talking about that, and specifically to the Santa Clarita Valley, you guys have some stuff too, right? Some we newish do. stuff. We do. We've been uh, teaming up with City of Hope, and uh, we have a variety of City of Hope surgeons on staff at Holy Cross, and they have a clinic up here in Santa Clarita, as well as one down in Mission Hills. And what I like about this is, so we have general oncologic cancer surgeons, we have urologic cancer surgeons, we have uh, GYN, a uh, women's health oncologic surgeons, surgeons. Um, what I like about these guys and gals is they're, they're obviously clinically phenomenal and they're nice. And so they're a great fit for the culture of Holy Cross and it's been a wonderful team effort. I also like the fact that patients don't have to travel far to get care by one of these doctors. They can now receive that same level of care right here in our community, right here at Providence Holy Cross Medical Center. Yeah, and that's important. And uh, I was telling you guys that my son recently had, well not recently, a couple years ago, had a staph infection uh, and he had like 102 fever the whole time. And, it, you know, he's our first kid. He was about 18 months old uh, at the time. And he had a big old staph infection. Those are gross. And he had a fever for like, I want to say like three days straight. And so we took him to Providence. And uh, I remember the one thing that, uh, that I will never forget is at, while we were at Providence, in the ER is the the nurses just making sure that we were okay the whole time. And and, and we, we got there at like, you know, we were 7 o'clock at night. We were there until like 3 in the morning, and then we get, he got, you know, all the medicine that he needed, and he was really dehydrated, so they kept like – Excuse me. He kept uh, like blowing the veins and stuff. They, it was and it was just a crazy thing. But the the nurses at at Providence were just phenomenal. They were just there the whole time, making sure that we were okay. And we were like, should we tip them? Like, dude, can you tip a nurse? Like, what's going on here? So that's one of the one of the things that um uh, you know I have I know about Providence is the 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 bedside manner is just absolutely fantastic. Well, that that's really wonderful to hear, and that really that's that's just great. I mean, that's music to my ears. And and no, while we don't tip nurses, we do have <laughs> um, programs where people can make donations in the honor and in the name of staff uh, through the hospital. But but I want to talk about compassion a little bit because I get it as a as a father too. I've I've had my kid in a hospital, and there's nothing more scary than having your loved one in the hospital or you being in the hospital. And you tend to cling on to every action and every word you see. And, and we, we at, at Holy Cross, we are very serious about pro treating our patients and their families with compassion. Our goal is to provide highly reliable, high quality, highly satisfying care 
at the right place at the right time with our phenomenal people. And so we have chaplains in the hospital 24-7 to meet needs of any religion or no religion. Uh, and we also have a, pallet, a phenomenal palliative care service that help can help those with uh, end-of-life issues or chronic issues, making sure that we preserve the quality of life as long as we possibly can. So what I'd like to do then is share something that was recently posted on our Facebook page. And this, I, you know, as a chief exec, you, you get letters from people and sometimes emails and sometimes postings. I'm very fortunate. The vast majority of letters are positive well, about their yeah. experience at Holy Cross. And um, when you think about that, you know, who writes a letter? It tends to be people very angry and oh, upset. Yeah. So for somebody to take time to write a positive letter means that, that, that they must have been really pleased. So I'm going to share this one that's on our Facebook page. It says, my mom's been admitted to various hospitals over the last five or so years, and this is by far the best hospital. Every single staff member, from doctors to nurses, nurses assistants and lab technicians, has been so compassionate, sweet, caring, and respectful. Being hospitalized is never easy, but having her in such a capable Having her in such capable and loving hands helps, uh, helped us through it all. We couldn't have found a better group of genuinely great human beings. And I think this, I, c I couldn't say it better. I think this epitomizes what Providence Holy Cross is all about. Yeah. And, uh, well, thank you for coming on. I appreciate you coming on. And uh, this was fun. Yeah, this it was, was good. Great, I learned Kyle. some stuff. Learned about robots. Learned about some some health, some important healthcare reform stuff as well. So, uh, thank you for coming on. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. This is the has been the Providence Holy Cross Hour on AM twelve twenty KHDS. You can find out more information by going to providence.org slash Holy Cross. Doctor Bernie Klein, thanks again for stopping by, and uh, and we'll see you soon. Right? You I get, hope are so. you coming back? Happy to come back anytime. Okay, it's a lot right. of fun. All right, and uh, this is Santa Clarita's hometown station, AM twelve twenty KHDS.